Convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is video tape number 24, Introduction to Scanning. How's everyone doing? I'm a modify. I'm a part of attrition.org staff. Uh, I'm going to be doing intro to scanners, basically uh, showing Nmap and the flags and uh, what shows up in the logs. Um, so I'm going to start off. Uh, a scanner is a program that detects weakness in remote or local computer systems. Scanners attack TCP IP ports and service and record the response from the target host. The hosts, however, attacker must know how to interpret these uh, scans. They're not going to show you uh, what's vulnerable. Um, they're not going to tell you what kind of exploit to use. Uh, ports are monitored by the INET-D daemon, which is started at boot time. Um, INET-D reads the Etsy INET-D comp file at boot time to determine which network services it is supposed to manage. Um, uh, these are all the services. You can uh, comment them out and they won't be started at boot time by putting a pound sign before them. In simple terms, port scanners probe a host and attempt to establish a connection on every available port one after another. This provides a roadmap of available services on a certain computer and can be used to launch an attack against the system. Um, we're going to be showing Nmap, which is uh, found at www.insecure.org slash Nmap. Um, this system is uh, running Slackware 3.5 with kernel 2.0.34, um, as you can see. Um, port scanning is a uh, very popular re reconnaissance tool amongst hackers. Um, some of the other uh, scanning techniques I'd like to mention is uh, RPC info and uh, show mount. Um, it shows the RPC services uh, that are running on a host. Uh, as you can see right off the bat, NFS. Um, the other is show mount. This shows a list of exported file directories and who can uh, mount them. Um, if we did have an export list, uh, it would be shown with the directories and who owns, who's allowed to. Uh, and when it shows it, if they show like a root directory, and uh, sometimes you'll see anonymous, you can mount that by uh, doing a mount minus T NFS target host colon whatever directory space slash mount you see the in the mount and you have control of the system from there you can probably grab the password file and crack it or add your own entry I'm going to go into some of the flags of nmap um, you can uh, learn more about nmap by doing man nmap or type it to more, gives you all the flags and what each one is associated to it. Um, some of the flags are uh, nmap minus st host name is a TCP scan. It's not very stealthy. It uh, shows up a lot in the logs. And I'll demo that right now.
energy to port, the state, which all of them are open, the protocol, TCP, and the service. Um, Um, it gets the services by looking at Etsy services, but there's also an Nmap file called uh, Nmap Dash Services. What it does is it scans the ports and then matches those to its file, and all those have like it's like a database of of all the services, the ports. it again and take a look at the logs. As you can see, uh, it's telling you what port it's connecting to, what service is running, and it also has the identification of who's doing the port scanning and where it's coming from. The next flag is uh, and that, that minus S, capital S, localhost, or target. What this is, is it's a uh, TCP SYN scan. This, this technique is often referred to as a half open scan because you don't open a full TP, TCP connection. In other words, you don't do three way handshaking. Um, it waits for SYNAC from destination. If SYNAC is received, then the port is open. If it's not, it's obviously closed. If reset is received, the port is closed. Rather than act as established connection, it immediately resets to close the connection. This is scanning the same, the same uh, ports here. But if we look into the logs, we get connection from unknown. They can't determine who's uh, port scanning. Uh, the next flag is uh, a stealth fin. That's uh, minus S capital F. Um, the fin scan uses a bare fin packet as the probe. Um, used when sin scanning is not stealthy enough. And uh, some programs uh, watch for sin packets, uh, such as sin logger and Courtney, just to name a few. Um, we'll show that one. It's, it's been planned. I was going to put on some Bee Gees, uh, but uh, <laughs> um, this is the uh, stealth the stealth scan. Uh, most uh, the, by the way, I don't have any uh, extended logging on this machine, such as Abacus Century or anything like that. So. Um, but uh, the conventional. Uh, Bar log messages this the uh, scanner won't show up. Uh, the next one's a Christmas scan. Christmas scan turns on the fin urge and push flags. That's done by uh, a minus s capital X. get anything uh, coming up in your bar log messages. And the next one's a null scan. Null scan turns off all flags. Uh, don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Theodore. Uh, he wrote uh, NMAP, actually. 
I just like Christmas scan because you know you've got almost all the flags there. You know, kind of a Christmas packet type of deal. And you don't have the uh, you don't have the same packet in there. But uh, you know, the thing, but it's almost a Christmas packet. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I just said it was, you're almost sending, you know, the Christmas packets, Christmas tree, light segment uh, packets where you have all the flags enabled. So, uh, so that's just why I called it that. Sorry, this is kind of impromptu. I thought it was a radio scanning yeah. seminar. Someone just said, hey, dude, they have a map in that room. <laughs> I thought I'd stop by. Well, come on, pull up a speed, man. Okay, uh, the next one uh, I'm going to show is uh, the ping scanning. Uh, ping scanning is used to determine what hosts are on the network or up. Since an ICMP echo request to every machine on the network, hosts that respond are up. I don't have a network up here, so it's only seeing my local computer here. It's sees my uh, one IP address, one host up, scan in zero seconds. Uh, the next one is uh, minus PT, capital PT. It's a TCP ping to determine what hosts are up. Instead of sending the ICMP echo request packets like in the previous one and waiting for a response, we send out a TCP ACK packets throughout the target network or to a single machine and then wait for responses to return. Hosts that are up should respond with a reset. To, to set the destination port, it's uh, and that minus PT, and then whatever port you want uh, to scan. Uh, the default port is 80, so we'll just leave it at 80. Those are from, from our log messages. Uh, the next scan is uh, minus SU. This is a UDP scan. This method is used to determine which UDP ports are open to on a host. It sends a zero byte UDP packet to each port on the target machine. If we receive an ICMP port unreachable message, then the port is closed. Um, the UDP scan takes considerably longer because of uh, um, the kernel limitations for sending out ICMP error messages. Um, this is defined in RFC 1812, section 4.3.2.8. Yeah, it's beautiful to ignore the RFC, that's why. Solaris, it takes uh, considerably longer. Um, Linux is, I think, 80 messages, or 80 per four seconds, and Solaris is limited to about two messages per second. Some of the uh, UDP services you may find are uh, Cult of the Dead Cows, Back Orifice, Trivial FTP, NFS, SNMP. Yeah. 
these live services and bring them together. But if you find new services that you think should be in there, you know, just drop an email. And of course, you can add your own and that services file. Uh, by default, it only uses uh, the one that's included. Um, as you can see, it uh, took a considerable amount of time, but uh, we had the uh, port, state, and protocol and service for uh, the UDP to scan. Uh, the next one is the uh, FTP bounce. Um, in older, uh, FTP servers would allow a proxy connection. An example, a user could connect to an FTP server and send a file anywhere on the internet from that FTP server. Um, this method it uses the FTP proxy to bounce a TP, TCP scan off the server to the victim. So basically you're scanning from another host. And that's, uh, I'll put up the syntax. And then you put up the FTP bounce host. the target and that's how it's run I don't have two machines connected so I can't show it to you uh, the next one is um, the minus capital O flag um, this option activates for most ho host identification um, by a TCP IP fingerprinting. It takes advantage of nuances found in each OS's TCP IP stack to determine what OS is running. Send specifically crafted packets to a host. Uh, this information is used to generate a fingerprint, which is then used to match from a database of known OS fingerprints. So it uh, shows us all the ports that are available, and then we have TCP sequence prediction. It's truly random. It would be very difficult to hijack. Uh, hijacking using uh, trusted relationship exploitation. Um, remote operating system guess, Linux 2.0.32 to 3.4, and I am using 0.34, so that is accurate. Um, it shows one IP address and scan in two seconds. Uh, the next one is uh, a logging option. You know, sometimes even those transparent proxies are in between. You know, anything that rewrites the uh, packet headers is going to screw you up because we rely on a bunch of real low-level details like, you know, the ordering they put TCP options and the, uh, you know, time to lives that they use and, uh, you know, just a ton of those low-level flags. So if you have anything in between you and them, like a masquerading host or whatnot uh, that rewrites the packets, uh, you're in trouble. Uh, you can still sometimes figure it out, but uh, you know it's hard for Nmap to automatically figure it out. You have to kind of compare the fingerprints you get with the Nmap fingerprints file. There are a few cases where you know it can report. Okay, his question is, uh, if there's a network device between you and them, let's, like a, net, a router shouldn't cause you any trouble at all, but uh, mostly it's masquerading uh, hosts, 
or uh, you know those IP transparent proxying like Linux has, anything that rewrites the uh, you know TCP or IP headers uh, has the potential to screw you up because it kind of pollutes it. Some of the aspects will then look like the host in between you and them. But it shouldn't generally uh, cause extra ports to be uh, shown. Okay, yeah, do that. So, so far, well, uh, yes, it absolutely does. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit more effort, you know, in that you have to compare the fingerprint. But if you see something like, hey, the TCP window size is 0x2297, you know, that gives you a good clue. Look in the Nmap fingerprints file and see what machines have used that TCP initial window size. And you can often figure out both who's at the very end and what's sitting between you and that host. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, there's actually going to be a presentation uh, by Craig Rowland, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure at what time. 1,800 hours. Okay, at 6 p.m. And uh, he's been working on the Abacus project, uh, which kind of helps you detect uh, some sorts of scans. Of course, Nmap has a lot of, I don't know what he's shown you so far, but it has a lot of uh, extra features in order to uh, counterattack those defensive measures. For example, you can spoof the IP address you use, uh, which, uh, and you can also send decoys out. So they'll say, hey, it looks like 10 different IP addresses scanned me. You know, who was the person actually scanning? Uh, you can also sometimes trick uh, port sentry into uh, firewalling the wrong hosts, like if you have it on defensive mode. So uh, you'll fake a port scan as coming from their main gateway. All of a sudden they say, oh no, a port scan. You know, I'm going to drop their packets, but there goes their network connectivity. So you have to be very, very careful uh, in deploying uh, reactive capabilities. Because uh, always remember, if the scans could be spoofed. Uh, just because you logged a scan, it could be someone scanning you, or it could be someone who wants you to think uh, that someone's scanning you. So take everything in your logs with a grain of salt, of course. Uh, yo. Um, you know, there are various things that, you know, with the network that can in some cases uh, cause it to uh, fluctuate. You know, one of the biggest things is that people have, like I said, a masquerading gateway between them. So you're getting kind of pollution of one system in between. Uh, you can also have cases where, hey, you know, if they specially configured it with a kernel parameter that changes, like Solaris has a parameter that will change the TCP sequence uh, predictability. Uh, we have that one covered in Nmap, but there are other examples where people can, uh, you know, change their kernel parameters uh, and make it look different. Um, generally, you should, but if you can find a host that doesn't always give you the same uh, response, uh, just send me mail, uh, preferably with the IP address if you can, and I'll, you know, see if I can address that. You know, sometimes some, like, Windows machines are really bad about this. You know, they're just not deterministic in a lot of ways. You know, you, you would think if I send the same packet to them, I'll always get the same packet back. The, the same type of packet. But no, sometimes you'll get completely different flags set. You know, it's like, you know, maybe they have some uninitialized memory or whatnot, but it, I've seen some very bizarre characteristics where a Windows machine will look one way the first time, then you'll scan the same machine, you know, and it, it'll respond to the same packet differently. But yeah, there are some cases like that. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, it definitely does. Uh, if it doesn't detect a host, like if in that example he just did, if it hadn't detected the host, it would have given a URL you can go and enter it in, and then I'll add it to the global database so that, you know, Nmap should be able to scan that sort of system. And we've already, we have hundreds of them in there, you know. 
from your normal Linux, you know, all the kernels, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, to really, really obscure shit, you know, they're special little printers, you know, all sorts of, you know, network cameras, you know, anything with an IP stack is fair game as far as I'm concerned. So uh, send it in and I'll add it. Uh, it's just hyphen capital O. Um, the last one I just did was a uh, uh, minus O and then a log file. Uh, I called it dc7.txt. And it just writes out to a file that I uh, that I name. It's uh, just like doing uh, nmap minus a lowercase s, uppercase s, localhost, and then direct it to a file with uh, two greater than symbols. Um, the next one's uh, port ranges. You can actually set the port ranges you want to scan. Listing of uh, what services are running on those particular ports if they're open. Uh, the minus F is a fast scan. It only scans for services listed in uh, Etsy services file. <coughs> multiplexing through select and such and I found that produces uh, significantly faster results because you don't have to waste kernel time scheduling all the threads when really all we need to do is multiplex the I.O. They're actually automatically randomized. Next one is decoy scanning. He mentioned that um, causes a decoy scan to be performed, which makes it appear the remote host that the host you specify as decoys are scanning the target network too. The IDS might report five to ten port scans from unique IP addresses, but they won't know which ones are decoys and which one is the IP scanning them. Um, the syntax for that is. he's typing it in, let me just mention a couple quick things about decoys, a couple hints uh, that people may have found useful. Uh, one, uh, a very popular and very excellent tool uh, for detecting uh, SIN scans and such that I recommend is uh, Scan Log D by Solar Designer. Uh, however, you know, you come into denial of service issues, you know, if you try and uh, if you try and detect too many scans, I mean, you don't want me to just give a, you know, 100,000 fake IPs and fill up your logs. Uh, so by default, and, and use all your memory space, so by default, scan log D only logs the first five addresses uh, that are scanned from. So I recommend always use at least five uh, decoys. And you can use ME as a parameter saying my IP. Uh, in order, otherwise it randomizes, you know, which order is you and which is the decoys. You know, if you have six or seven of them, and then you say capital M, capital E, you know, me, then scan log D will only log uh, the first five. 
uh, addresses and you'll generally be home free. Another quick decoy hint is, and this is probably obvious to most of you, but I've been amazed how many times I get people from, you know, Yahoo and Microsoft. You know, people don't use, you know, www.yahoo.com as your decoy. I mean, let's see, I got a scan from Microsoft.com, Yahoo.com, and dialup33.uu.net. You know, you ruin your decoy there. But I've seen that a lot, you know. How did I get caught? I used five decoys. Well, you know, you gotta have a clue. Same with hosts that aren't up, you know. I just made up IP addresses, they don't even route, and you wonder why they figured out, you know, who it was doing it. You know, you do have to show a little sense here. Um, the last one is uh, that I'm going to mention is minus G, and uh, that sets the uh, source port number used in a scan. Because many uh, firewalls you let through the DNS port or FTP data on port 20, so you can spoof a DNS packet and scan inside. Um, that's minus G. target and that's the syntax. Um, yeah, just a quick note. Um, you know, that's more useful than it even looks. I mean, I'm sure none of you administrators do it, but you'd be amazed how many people just, oh crap, we installed the new firewall and DNS isn't working. We gotta let these DNS packets through. Oh, well, let's just, anything from source port 53 has gotta be DNS, right? You know, just let it through. And, oh shit, you know, FTP's not working because you can't make the FTP data connection back. Well, a quick firewall rule. You know, so, you know, I've been completely flabbergasted by, uh, by how often just adding hyphen G53 for UDP scans or hyphen G20 uh, for TCP scans, you know, suddenly get straight through. Right, this is, that's a great tool, but it's, it's kind of on the, the lines as, as Firewalk. I don't know if any of you saw that by route. Uh, you can check that out at packetfactory.com. Um, but um, does anyone have any questions? Oh yeah, that's uh, kick ass. Um, a guy. Uh, what's his name? Um, yeah, there's. It comes with an X version for people who like Louise. Um, a guy wrote it. Fuck. Forgot his name right offhand. But anyway, it's called Nmap FE. If you go to the web page, it has links to it. Um, yeah, if you're into that, it uh, uses GTK, and it's a real pretty interface, and it allows you to point and click. Because uh, some people bitch at me saying, hey, you know, there's like 28 options, and I have to read the man page every time I use it. So here you can just, you know, they're intuitively placed, and you can click your buttons and such. You know, to check that out. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is really uh, try to attend uh, Craig Rowland's speak, speech. Uh, the Abacus Century uh, um, IDS is really nice. It'll detect port scans and uh, dump them in your host.denial file so they can't even reach you. It's really nice. But uh, does anyone have any questions? Said six, right? You said eighteen. Oh yeah, eighteen hundred hours, six o'clock. In the back. talking about like a, a, a time-based attack, like slow, so that...
will be uh, yeah. Yeah. one thing that would be useful in that respect is like a really slow scan you know that take a week or two and you know scan port by port so you stay under the thresholds you know there's also distributed scans you know scan from six machines and coordinate the results uh, personally though my technique is uh, distribute widely available, easy to use tools to do this so that all the script kitties, uh, it, that way they don't see anything abnormal. They'll say, huh, this looks like the 20 other scans you know, that are in my log from today. You know, so uh, since these tools are so widely available, uh, it allows uh, people are less concerned about seeing a port scan. You know, they see it every day, it's kind of like a trace route. Uh, and uh, also, you can use the decoys. Uh, it's very difficult, you know, to trace that back if they see 10 or 20 uh, different IP addresses doing the scanning. Uh, as long as you've chosen the decoys well, of course. Uh, so I, I am probably going to add the slow scan, but I haven't yet, just because I'm I'm not very patient, uh, and I don't want to wait a week for my scan results. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up now. CDC is about to start with BO2K. Um, if you need to email either one of us, modify at attrition.org or Theodore at insecure.org. Or dhp.com. Or dhp.com. Thanks a lot.